Hello students, I hope all of you are sound and safe. We have to discuss another nutrient and that is sodium, another macronutrient or macromineral. Um, sodium is found among other things, among other sources in salt. Salt by weight is 40% sodium and 60% chloride. Okay, That's an introductory information before I uh, share more information with you. I want to show you a couple of pictures from a place called Wieliczka in the country of Poland in Central Europe. Here's the first one. The reason why I'm showing you these pictures is be because in Wieliczka we find an underground salt mine. It is very unique and even though you see uh, or what you see in here is all salt and this is not purified salt, that's why it's not crystal white, but it's all salt. We have chapels and tennis courts and even sculptures inside that particular salt mine. Here you see the sculptures made of salt inside that particular um, salt mine. If you ever visit, make a plans to go and visit um, this salt mine. With that introduction, uh, one of the things we will be discussing is why sodium is so important, what is its role in the body, okay? What are the recommendations for sodium intake and how does intake compare to these recommendations, okay? How sodium is regulated, there's actually quite sophisticated mechanism by which the body regulates sodium um, um, uh, uh, retention, okay? And then lastly, we'll look at health effects associated mainly with sodium, excess sodium intake, but also somewhat with sodium deficiency. Let's begin with the function. Have you ever um, cooked? Have you ever sliced any veggies? And have you ever added any salt to those veggies? If you put a little bit of salt on, say, grated cabbage or a sliced eggplant or cucumbers or things of that nature, you will see that within a few minutes you will see droplets of water in the area where you sprinkle the salt. One of the functions of salt or sodium, I should say, is uh, sodium attracts water. Okay, And so in the body, sodium regulates um, and distributes water and balances water from one compartment to another. Sodium also regulates blood pressure. When we ingest more uh, salt slash sodium, we absorb that sodium and that sodium attracts water. So we have higher blood volume, which causes higher blood pressure. Okay. Uh, sodium is also essential for nerve impulses and muscle contractions. And so we see, for example, among individuals with inadequate intake, and or uh, when they have profused um, a loss of body fluids in which we, we lose sodium, that they may develop tremors, which is a shaking hands type of thing, because again, the sodium uh, content impacts muscle contraction and nerve impulse as well. Uh, sodium is the main electrolyte, specifically cations, a cation in the extracellular compartment, that means outside of the cell. Um, potassium is the main cation in the intracellular or inside the cell compartments. How do we regulate sodium in the body? First, let me introduce you to a few terms that are important to remember. Uh, in the context of sodium, number one, hyponatremia, notice abnormally low concentration of blood sodium. Okay? Hypo means low or low or abnormally low or lower than normal. Okay? Emia refers to the blood, natrium refers to sodium. Hyponatremia, abnormally high concentration of the blood. Hypovolemia, abnormally low blood volume. And that would be a result of very low sodium uh, in the blood, okay? And hypervolemia is abnormally high blood volume, 
a result of a too high absorption of sodium. The absorption and or the regulation of sodium is to make sure that sodium level in the blood is maintained in this very narrow range that you can see. If we ingest a lot of sodium, that sodium is absorbed and we can exceed that um, range. On the other hand, when we are dehydrated or, or well, whether because we didn't drink enough water and sodium with it and or um, if we have diarrhea or vomiting, the concentration may, may drop. Whatever amount of sodium that we ingest with foods, with salt, almost now all of it, almost all of it will be absorbed. Notice approximately 98 of ingested sodium is absorbed and we absorb sodium in both small and large intestines. Well, this may be good because if we don't have enough sodium, we may end up with uh, some adverse health conditions. Unfortunately, because we now uh, ingest um, more than enough sodium, uh, when I say now, meaning you know, for the last several decades or so, okay, there was time in the history of humanity where uh, sodium deficiency was very prevalent. In fact, um, the Latin word from which in English we derive English word salary comes from sodium because sodium was very important and even a wage was paid to workers and soldiers in ancient war Rome, for example, in um, uh, salt because part of that salt was of course sodium. Wars have been taught, fought uh, over salt mines because again in the past sodium was a rarity it was like a gold when it comes to um, nutrition of uh, nutrients you see but now we have sodium distributed in many different foods and we have uh, uh, sodium in salt in salt shakers and so we ingest way more than what is needed sodium is regulated mainly by the kidneys not only because we absorb we rather um, uh, uh, lose or excrete sodium via urine and via kidneys, but also because, as you will see in a moment, kidneys play a role in uh, secreting specific hormones that regulate sodium level and blood volume level. Okay, Only small amounts, approximately 10% or so, are excreted through the feces and sweat, although if you are living in a hot and humid environment and you are an athlete or training otherwise or have a, uh, a strenuous physical work outside you may um, lose a little bit more of sodium perhaps as sweat. Here we have an illustration of what happens when blood pressure falls. Okay, The kidneys secretes two hormones, renin and angiotensin, okay? These hormones stimulate the adrenal glands to secrete another hormone, uh, uh, aldosterone. And aldosterone stimulates the kidneys to retain sodium uh, or salt, well, sodium really. And so um, less sodium is being lost in the urine. Uh, we have a lower urine output that conserves um, uh, water or urine, which increases blood pressure, okay? So this way we control how much sodium we have in the blood, and we also control blood pressure, preventing from uh, too low blood pressure, because too low blood pressure potentially could cause um, fainting or uh, losing conscious, things of that nature, which would not be obviously um, uh, very beneficial for anybody. Uh, the system I just um, described is called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And it is one, again, that is um, or explains the uh, maintenance of adequate sodium and adequate blood pressure. Let's look at uh, recommendations and intake of sodium. Notice that the intake of sodium, adequate intake here, 
is based on uh, age. This is because, as I already mentioned, about 90% or so of sodium is excreted through kidneys. As we age, the kidneys are not efficient in uh, as, as efficient as they were when we were younger in uh, getting rid of the sodium. And so it is recommended that, we, that as we age, we actually uh, excrete lower amounts of sodium. Okay. Notice also that the recommendation adequate intake and the upper tolerable level are very close, only about oh, uh, what is it, 18 milligrams, and for those individual between individuals between 19 and 50, and uh, about 1,000 or so for those 50 to 70, 1,100 for those over 70, and so it is very easy to exceed the intake of sodium that is recommended. Another information daily value on food labels is set for 2,400 milligrams per day. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, we have this discrepancy between what is recommended and uh, what is given as a daily value for food label. When it comes to sodium intake, this is data for the United States. And notice that, especially for males, but also for females, depending on age group, most of them exceed the recommendation. In fact, um, not only the recommendation in terms of adequate intake, but the upper tolerable level. Okay, And so, uh, as I mentioned, the majority of people ingest too much sodium in their diet. Now, this data here is for China. This is data between 91 and 2009. And notice the average consumption. It's uh, the good thing is about Chinese intake or uh, intake among Chinese people is that it actually is decreasing. But still, we have for 2009, that's the newest data that I found, 4.7 grams, 4.7 grams or 4,700 milligrams intake. That's about what, three times the recommendation, actually more than three times the recommendation. And again, when we look at uh, the brackets here uh, of uh, groups of individuals with different intake, we see that uh, quite a few of them, even still uh, um, in 2009, uh, consume way over the recommended uh, amount. The recommended amount, when we take that less than 1.5, grams or 1500 milligrams, we have minute percentage of individuals who actually meet um, that recommendation. Now, uh, in China, unlike in the United States, the main source of sodium is salt. Okay? Notice for 2009 here, almost 70% of the ingested sodium came from salt. Okay? Soya sauce is a relatively a good, uh, good source as well. But again, uh, salt is by far the biggest um, contributor to the overall sodium intake. As I mentioned, this is unlike in the United States, where salt intake from table salt is actually relatively negligible, negligible only about 15%. However, uh, in the United States, most of the sodium comes from foods to which salt was added. Okay, so canned foods, notice, for example, um, canned uh, soups, canned meat, pickles, uh, 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 and the ready prepared uh, entrees, whether frozen um, in grocery stores and also those that we buy in our restaurants. Health effects of sodium, briefly. So we have to discuss sodium toxicity symptoms or too high intake, and those include hypertension, which contribute to cardiovascular disease, stroke, and renal disease. Okay. The second one is gastric cancer. Okay. Notice osteoporosis. I have a question mark because it is not maybe uh, fully established with the high intake of sodium contributes to osteoporosis. Okay? On the other hand, when we are talking about deficiency, we are talking muscle cramps and um, tremors, things of that nature, mental apathy, loss of appetite. 
Now for individuals who develop deficiency, we would need to apply oral rehydration therapy, which means you take a cup of water, you add a teaspoon of sugar and you add a half a teaspoon of, of salt. You mix it all together, you drink, and that will prevent very quickly deficiency of sodium. As I mentioned, we ingest way more than what we needed in terms of sodium intake. However, sodium deficiency can occur, as I already mentioned, when we are talking about severe diarrhea, severe vomiting, profuse sweating, and then Addison's disease, which impacts the hormonal regulation of sodium. That's all we have time for. Thank you.